All right, it's Thursday, the 1st of September. I'm gonna do a patch preview. We'll see how long it takes exactly. Got a few notes to go through, but I'd like to show you guys the ropes a little bit about the changes that are gonna be happening in the Nexus. Right now, on 29th of August, we got a few changes for various different heroes, two new battlegrounds and a new hero as well, Alarak. Uh, and so there's, there's a whole bunch of changes which are currently playable on the PTR, as I said, which is the public test realm. You can play the PTR as well, just by going to the Batonet launcher, changing a region to PTR. Also, since today is the 1st of September, there has been a new patch note release, which is an addendum, which I will show next after going through the original one. So I'm going to kind of breeze through this where uh, we've got a few maps going out. Oh, they're only testing one of the StarCraft maps. So they're just keeping Reading two of the old friend. maps and uh, Hi, me. <laughs> Hi, Waku30. Uh, yeah. So, uh, hi, one day older Raku 30, or maybe half a day. Gonna be playing on three maps. Kinda gonna breeze through this. New hero, Alarak. You're gonna see a lot of gameplay of that uh, in the uh, PTR. I've already got a bunch of videos about Alarak on YouTube, so you can browse through the rest of my channel to see what's up there. Same thing with the Battlegram. Kinda wanna move on and see what the changes are that uh, I haven't played with yet. Because I've played these this build a few weeks ago at Gamescom, which there's videos on my YouTube for, but uh, I didn't get to play some of the other changes yet. The first one that is extremely relevant, which already was at Gamescom, but which I didn't fully realize, is that the movement speed of mounts is gonna be reduced from 40 to 30%, which means your effective movement on a mount will be 130 instead of 140. That's a pretty significant change that will have big ramifications for how quickly you would clear a lane, go somewhere else, gank someone, and then return again. That movement speed reduction will, yeah, will create a lot of differences. I can tell you right now that Falstad, uh, a hero who has a bonus trait of movement speed to make up for the fact that he can't mount up, has been downwards adjusted as well to make amends and compensations for the fact that he would now, by comparison, be faster. So he's also been slowed down a bit by 5%. Globes continue to receive new iterations, two seconds less uh, of uptime. There was already a move to trying to make globes more impactful and trying to zone people out, but I did always feel that regeneration globes lasted for too long. Trying to zone someone out from a globe was too difficult because they were there for so long. It's really risky to go stand in the middle of the lane and say don't get this club for eight seconds long so really like this change maybe now you'll actually try to prevent people from getting the regeneration gloves which i don't think really was playstyle yet yet a shorter spawn timer on bruisers that's pretty much it and everything else didn't change and then a shorter one on sappers and the bloom pirates Try me mode has been expanded a bit. We can uh, look into this. You now can try to see what heroes can do boss camps effectively. You can also change game speed, which I think is actually the most interesting aspect. This kind of customization was not available. In fact, there's almost no customization available yet in Heroes of the Storm. You've got try mode, you've got playing games. Replays are still difficult to watch and try mode itself doesn't have a lot of... Um, customization yet so i really applaud this change and i hope more will keep coming like this imposing presence is now going to be more active there is a passive element which is far less than before before it was uh 40 percent passive now it's 20 percent but you can also choose to activate it to have uh a full 50 percent reduction which is more than before and also crucially a movement speed reduction for 2.5 seconds 20% is not a lot. The good thing is that for nublets, you still have a basic functionality, but it will definitely be harder to use. And I think this kind of changes is really good always because you actually have to make a decision rather than just passively buffing yourself. 
you're only controlling one hero already. So the fact that you have bonus customization is a good thing. Same thing with Spell Shield. I like it. Talked about this before at Gamescom. You can now turn it off so that you don't get procced off of something. It's a... Uh, Nearby, oh, nearby heroes and summons. Reading is really good, isn't it? Damn. Well, we'll have to see how that plays out. 5% reduction in Tailwind. And here. A new version of Bribe for Falstad, where he can instantly defeat minions. And when he does, he gets a permanent damage increase for Lightning Rod. Without a cap, notably. Huh. So... Okay, that's pretty cool. 5% is not a lot though. And you'd be giving up either the stacking of the hammer or the seasoned marksman. So you're getting map control. But by doing a map control style PvE, you're not making yourself as weak in teamfights as you would before. It's a slight mitigation of your reduced teamfight uh, ability. Which is again a push to try and make PvEing a more attractive part of the gameplay. We can see this also in the way that Nidus Worm has been buffed for Zagara recently. And I think people that have players on their team who PvE a lot will be happy to see that, the, that something is being done for PvEers. Relentless Predator is removed so Greymane finally got the final nail in the coffin. Uh, it would be good to see him perform more poorly than Vala and Nova. He was around for quite long already and no one really likes Worgans anyway. They boarded up their city and did not help. Just like the dead in Aragorn's story, Lord of the Rings. So, utterly shafted. Nice. Erigas, movement speed also been reduced. Uh, Nova, who is now better than Greymane, uh, will get a reduction in movement speed as well. And she also gets bribe, where if she bribes things... Oh no, she just got bribe. But she can now get bribe stacks off of hero takedowns. Greymane is still good? <laughs> um, yeah, I guess... He still has a cocktail marked for the kill build. It's it's not going to be terrible. But uh, this was the best level 16. So, I don't know, man. It's kind of cool that Nova can now help with map pressure by taking by doing hero takedowns. Nova didn't have amazing level 1 talents. And this could actually be a good option. Especially if you're playing against the Murky or Vikings. Honestly, I think this is going to be the number 1 talent for her. Very funny. Very funny. Raynor can no more longer bribe and we already knew about this change But this is new this was not at gamescom So he will now get some adrenaline rush cooldown reduction every time he gets stunned or rooted which actually makes stunning or rooting Raynor without follow-up a very poor uh, decision It's a level 4 talent though good point <laughs> That's true, that's true. Oh, so it competes with decoy talents? Oh, pfft. it's gonna be absolutely the best then. Man, I'm so glad that I don't do these patch previews offline. You guys are like, uh, YouTube comments come to life. Almost like real people are talking to me. That's so excellent. Thank you, guys. Uh, Butcher, I'm gonna play him next right after this preview. Uh, presumably we might get a butcher game on YouTube as well definitely for you guys here on Twitch basically everything changed about him uh, he's gonna get I thank you way more meat SMORC, and he doesn't WT3 lose it as quickly syndicate will keep your pockets full grub grub ditch hots and come back to the dark side SMORC <laughs> thank you for your opinion uh, love opinions and I love both games, as you know. Um, now, yes, I read the I read I missed it, but I read that mercenary camps no longer give XP when you clear them from the enemy, and I think this is also a good change. 
I know it seems kind of cliche that I think it's a good change, but trust me, if I thought it was bad, I would tell you. I have actually previewed these personally before with uh, even better reading comprehension skills, like a few days ago when it came out. And this is really good because sometimes you would do your camp, someone would come in, muscle you out, steal the capture point, and you're just thinking like, doesn't really matter. I'll just clear it, I'm right here, and we get the same XP, which is kind of dumb really. Now, mercenaries are purely a burden on you. If you start a mercenary camp push against your opponent, they've got to clear him. And it hurts. It's just time lost, damage taken, and wave clearing necessity without any of the benefit of like, well, I'm still getting a big chunk of XP from this. I think that's a good thing. Is it though? Because killing summons was freaking annoying in StarCraft 2 and you didn't get any XP for it. And whereas when you kill summons in Warcraft 3, you get XP. But I really think to keep mercenaries as a valid tool of push, it's pretty good that you don't get XP for it. All right, Butcher, whole slew of changes. I welcome you to pause the video and to read them. But just to kind of summarize Butcher so we can go on with playing some more games is his meat is completely reworked before you would get 25 to 35 meat stacks if you died you lost all or half of it now you can get up to 125 meat and when you die you lose 10 stacks meat is now intricately tied to the amount of damage that you can put out just as before but there's a much bigger amount that you can get butcher's dps at high level and high meat stacks is far higher than it was before and he also gets a butcher brand added functionality which is when he hits people that have the brand, he will increase the duration. Now his usual attack speed is not high enough to keep a permanent butcher brand on somebody. But if you've got a steam drone, I feel like we say this every time there's a new talent or a hero. If you have a steam drone, you're going to have an infinite butcher brand. And as we know, that's never going to happen because, uh, you know, it's because it's not going to happen. People don't take steam drone, they take... Medivac and people don't take Morales <laughs> Though I heard that Morales is gonna get some changes, but it looks like Butcher's gonna be a late game monster He does lose the relentless capacity on enraged. He's just gonna get resistant and when he drops below 50% No longer 25% CC and I will say this Blizzard is removing relentless from almost every hero and I don't like it. I think relentless is a good thing um, It does create more counterplay but I'm kind of happy that we've moved away from the full CC meta. Just four months ago, it was all Murdin, Kel'thas, Taronda. Stun, 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 stun. And if you get stunned, you die. And Rage was kind of cool against it. You shrug off the stuns. But apparently, that's confusing. Why did my stun last really long? I don't check the enemy talents. The stun lasts very short. I don't know why. It's broken. Like, how, how does he have cleanse? I don't think that's a good thing to remove Relentless. I don't agree with the reasoning, but uh, it's happening anyway. So we're going to have to deal with it until it changes, if it does. I'm not personally as interested in Resistant because uh, it doesn't really change playstyle. If he's the only one to deal damage on, you're still going to do it. If he is one of two targets that can take damage, maybe you kind of stop damaging him or maybe not. 25% isn't that much. Whereas, like, Enrage encouraged real counterplay. Like, just don't stun someone who has that kind of Relentless. Same with Greymane. You would have to, like, damage them. It would force you to play a style. It would force you to change your style of focusing people. Rather than just clicking someone and killing them. Oh, well. Tychus, same thing. No more Relentless. Now it gets a Resistant. Vala, rework. Okay. We've covered this rework. I have a number of Vala videos on my YouTube. Uh, this is no change yet. She got new changes though in this other tab that I've got here So we'll go skip Vala now and go to see what changed There's too many changes to cover them all here But suffice to say that I do like Vala's rework. I did like how she feels How she plays out at Gamescom Did also notice that her damage was too low. We've had a number uh, a lot of talented people on the Heroes of the Storm subreddit doing the crunching of maths, uh, finding out how much damage she does now and how much she did before, and finding indeed that it's not enough for damage now. And 
that a large part of her damage is now tied into Rancor, which is now a level 20 talent, and, it, and you can get up to 40% attack speed. And I also saw a compelling argument that says, without Rancor, her auto attack is really not very good. But once you add Rancor, it's insane. But because your attack speed is so high, you can't move while shooting. Stutter stepping is making use of free time between auto attack cooldowns to reposition. This creates a very cool play where you go pa pa pam pa pa pam pa pa pam and you move pa pa pam and move away pa pa pam pa pa. When you have high attack speed like a Tychus, and you're not like Tracer who can move while shooting, when you have a high attack speed, you're incentivized to just stand still. So it's not as cool. It attacks too fast. And you get the optimal usage just by standing still, which is not as dynamic and it's not as skillful. Ranker really is very important for her auto attack damage. And it's kind of a pity that it's so heavily tilted towards the level 20 talent to be effective with it. So I don't know. I don't I, I don't like that as much. I prefer Ranker was just gone or earlier and provided a much more gradual attack speed buff. For example, it's a level six talent. Which is really dumb because she's not Chromie. Okay, for example, it's a level 1, 4, 7, or 13 talent. And it offers 3% per hatred stack. Consistently. So it's 3, 6, 9, up to 30. Always like that. Or just bound into her trait. I don't know. Something like that. But uh, anyway, it's a level 40. You can choose range or attack speed. You'll always be hard pressed not to take this. Like it's really tough to actually not choose this. Moving on, uh, Asmodan, a few changes, no more Bribe, no more Relentless, which is fine. Relentless was bad, Bribe was weird on him. Uh, Murky can now be killed to stop Octograb. I think this is a good change. It's very tilting when you play against the Murky. He has Octograb, he deletes Squishies with it, and it's like, you must stay Cleanse just for Octograb. Um, even if you kill them, that was still a three second stun. You cannot reduce it by relentless. You have to cleanse it away. And sometimes your allies don't take it. I think that's a good thing. But rip murky. For murky players, it's not a good thing. Because how... This is, this is not any buff. It's just a nerf. And he already wasn't very strong. But since everybody hates to play against murky. Because he keeps coming back. And everyone ha hates to play with the murky on the team. I don't really care. Bribe removed. Oh, Pity can no longer click on the portal while Siege to move around and zippity zip and sh shoot people. Too bad. And this one is weird. I don't like it. I wouldn't take it. Uh, I don't like getting stunned or rooted while I'm in tank form. I'll try to Z out of it to not get stunned or rooted. So it feels very wrong to me. It also doesn't help at all against Chromie shooting at you while you're sieged. Because she's not going to stun or root you first. So, I don't like that functionality. I would never try to make use of this. Zagara, this is just to help with the new mount speed. And this one as well. This one is pretty cool. Bribe was an option on Brightwing, but now... She has Pixie Charm instead, and now you can get Bribe stacks from healing allied heroes, which really fits thematically with the way Brightwing is supposed to play. Rather than trying to farm lanes, you, have to, you are incentivized to heal your allies, which is good. It's the kind of quest that helps your allies more so uh, than you know the one that selfishly pursues another interest. So this is a good thing. Again, the resistant over the relentless, which I guess is pretty decent. Karazim was really uh, one of the top supports, and he was very slippery with relentless. But I don't really like the development, though, the resistant over relentless. But we'll see how it works out. I'm uh, I'll, I'm gonna go keep an open mind about it. Same thing with Lily. You can now choose where you detonate your grenade, which will increase skill and allows you to more accurately choose where you want people to bounce to. 
cool. Change on the trait here, the same thing, to reflect the new man speed. Anubra can no longer be invulnerable while burrow charging, which I think is a good thing. I've also seen feedback on Reddit that maybe he should have a little bit higher HP to compensate. Maybe. Maybe 50 bonus. I don't think he's going to be in a bad spot. It just feels really wrong to burrow charge away and have all poison damage be completely mitigated. It was wrong. Resistant when you Q. I think that's a pretty decent thing. But probably still take Diabolical Momentum. But this really isn't that bad. Especially if you're solo uh, Diablo. You're going to need some things to keep yourself safe. No more Relentless on ETC. ETC is already overrated as hell. If he goes in with a Power Slide with the intention of mush pitting or not. ETC dies a lot. There are very few good ETCs. And he really isn't as good as people think. And now he no longer has Relentless. So I don't think ETC is going to be top 3 warrior anymore. Night Take Spawn gets added as a base functionality. However, no longer stuns minions and mercs. Now you can take Block or Regen Master. Or getting your mana back from your punish. Which I think it's a good change. I'll miss the stun in Relentless. Because it was really good to protect your core from uh, big waves. But, uh, at least you can become unkillable with Johanna now. With block, oh, it's called reinforce, sorry. Uh, with reinforce or regen master. I've always liked regeneration style Johanna, and now you can do that again. Okay, Murden will now get a thunderclap base functionality with reverb. So that you don't always have to take it. And then you can spec additionally into it if you like. I think that's a good thing. So you can... Uh, I mean, it, it's good. Probably still go reverb though, usually. But you can now go for Perfect Storm, Block or Third Wind without feeling terrible. You're still doing some attack speed reduction. Because it was pretty much a must take. They recognized that and they did the change. I think it's a good thing. Because they, they like the fact that Murder gets chosen to counter auto attackers. Sitches, no more Relentless. And now he is a flea bag. You can do basic ability cooldown reduction whenever you get stunned or rooted. This is very likable. I like this. It's the same thing with Rainer, where stunning or rooting someone too many times without killing them can hurt you back. Which uh, I think is nice, because people just throw out their stuns and roots however they like. Now you have to think about it. That's pretty much it. Now I'm going to go to the new one that I haven't seen at all yet. The review or preview of the next one. So they've kind of had this settle in for three, four days. No, three days. And now these changes. 1st of September, which is today. Damage reduction on Hammerang, because Falstad is the top assassin. Uh, if you actually look at my tier list, you'll see that I do rate Falstad as the top assassin. Kerrigan as the very top and Vals at second top. Both tier S, which I classify as top tier. You can always pick first and they're stronger than other heroes with a similar role. You should first ban one of these in Hero League. So Falstad getting a damage reduction. I agree with it, 10% off. Updraft. Now also increases shield duration by 40%. But it already did that, didn't it? Let me check it out. Am I crazy? I'm just checking through the shop here. How's it going, Lottie? Oh, duration. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, it was the shield amount. It was the bow roll distance. And now it's the duration. Yes, Ryan John, thank you for your uh, passion for me to go play a game. I will, but I just want to see everything, okay? I want to see everything first. Just doing the preview. Press 1 if crazy. Don't press 1, please, guys. Thanks. Okay, the duration as well. So that's a bit of a buff. Boomerang, less detonation damage. These were the most popular... Usually the most popular way to play. Charged up, bonus range. Okay. Still don't take it, probably. Although, with the new bribe and damage buff, not bad. Huh. Airy Gust, three seconds now. Cooldown reduction. 
decrease from 4 to 3. Cooldown, okay, so it no longer goes from 6 to 2, but from 6 to 3. Seems fair, it was the most popular level 16. 15 damage increase for Vala is good, because her numbers were just too low. Is it enough? I don't know. Hatred now will last for 6 seconds instead of 4. This is huge. Note, by the way, that it still doesn't... Uh, that it still doesn't depreciate gradually, so it's still very punishing. <laughs> uh, punishing to you. lose your stacks. Waiting patiently for my now dollar headset. Blood trail, keep up the hot streams less than three. <laughs> Blood trail. This loud. Thank you, Flight Diverny. Oh, yes, yes. It's already on the way. Uh, I should send you your tracking code. Fly Diverny is the one that won the ASUS ROG sponsored headset. He won the giveaway. It's on the way, man. So this is good. Good change. Greetings, friend. You missed notes at the top? Okay, I'll check it out. Hey, Kavorkin Scarf, thank you for subscribing. So the notes at the top is what? Towers of Doom, attack damage increase for the Headless Horseman. Oh my god, it's going to be even more badass. And Kazra Impalers, the popular World of Warcraft creep. If you've seen my previous cast at the summer, re uh, the fall regionals too in Europe. Oops. Yes, the Diablo creep will now have more attack damage. Okay, a bit of buffs. That's fine. Don't care too much either way. Taste for blood will be back Little again to one and a half topic, seconds. But how do you stay mentally fresh when playing four hours on several days? I'm pretty exhausted after my ladder sessions in WC3. I take off all my clothes, I go sit in the garden, I surround myself with the smell of lavender and lilies, and then I close my eyes, I sit like that for six hours, then I have a two hour sleep and then I wake up again. It's, um, it's pretty intense and pretty made up. But for the most part, to answer you seriously, it is mere exposure. By exposing yourself, and I don't mean going naked, by exposing yourself to an experience, you will grow more and more numb to it. So you'll be able to endure longer and longer of the same thing. When I play, used to play 2-3 games of Warcraft 3, I'd be exhausted. Now I can play 30 in a row and feel fresh as a dandelion. After a hot summer rain. Thank you for the question and the donation, Ryan Gillette. Sergeant Hammer now has level 7... What is... Level 7, Slowing Mines. Let's just check out inside the game, which will explain us a little bit more. Because I don't really know what they're trying to say here. Just got her washed. So now it used to be that you had a slow mines here with an increased slow duration. Now you've got the bonus mines already at seven, which I think is a compelling choice compared to the other two, unlike the previous one. So this is a good change. Now let's see what happened at level thirteen. You still have the middle spider mine knocking back. I've always thought this should be called Bullhead Mine, not Mines, because there's only one that knocked back. Anyway, and then at level 16, nothing. So that's it. No more extra slow mines. Okay. They removed the level 16, 5 mines and moved it to 7. Deleting forever the bonus slow. Okie dokie. Not a whole big uh, difference, but it's a compelling choice at 7. I think generally it's quite good. So Gara is going to get a 4 go auto... Up? I... <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Shut up, Sergeant Hammer. Uh, 4 damage off on Zagara, which is good, because she was the top tier specialist. The very best in the game. Instant ban or pick. Uh... Also less damage on Bailing, also less damage on Hunter Killer, also less damage on Infested Drop. Rip in peace? Not really. Still good, probably. But, five straight nerfs? I can only agree with it. She still has creep, guys. She has creep. That's vision in a game that's reliant on imperfect information. She's always gonna be good. Now she's not must pick anymore. Maybe. Maybe she still is. Morales, detonation delay reduced from 0.3 to point infinity small. Can't count, really. Huh. 
So what does that mean? You can detonate it at your own feet if you'd like. I think that's what it means. Cool. Overall, pretty good changes. I rate the combination of the first patch notes that I looked at and this one. I rate it 8.2 out of 10. A few deductions for the relentless removals, which I personally I'm not sure if they're very good. But overall, really, I think in the right spot. Now, excellent. Nice. Good job. Thanks for the build, Aki. It's it's not really led me astray yet. Okay. Uh. What was the level 20?